What is this, Aiden? Caterpillar. It's a little caterpillar. So here on our farm, a lot of this we planted ourselves, including this whole area here. All these palm trees we planted, these are acais, and something that is in fruit right now are avocados. And we planted probably about eight, maybe ten, um, and about five or six of them are, are fruiting right now. So let's look at one of them, one of the varieties here. Oh, here's our chicken too. <laughs> She's molting. Is <laughs> this one right here. So this tree we planted when we, you know, around when we moved here. And it is now very, very large and producing. Uh, it's hard to see the fruit, but this is one of the biggest fruits there are. This one we believe is called Conde Avila, or Count Avila. And so it's a huge, huge fruit about this big. Um, kind of in the shape of a cashew almost or like a pear but really big and so that's one of our one of our albums. This avocado tree was actually here um, on the property when we were here uh, so it's a really old one we think probably 30 40 years by the by the size of the trunk and as you can see, it's loaded with avocados. We think it might be one of the more uh, common avocados because it's a little bit more fibrous, but it's also very, very prolific. So that's the one that just keeps giving us fruit probably until November or so. Here's yet another avocado that we planted ourselves. Um, so this wasn't here when we bought the property, but it is now producing very well. We don't remember the name of it, unfortunately, but it's huge. And these are so creamy. They're really, really delicious. Another thing that we have on this tree is a um, pitaya or dragon fruit vine. It's growing really well, so I wouldn't be surprised if this started to flower. We haven't had any fruit yet from dragon fruit, but maybe someday. This is another tree that was mature and here and fruiting when we first moved here. It's one of the markers of the property borderline, and it's tamarind. So they just fall off. They're so tall, it's hard for us to kind of come get them. But uh, here you can kind of see what the inside looks like. The pulp, it's really good. It's like a sweet tart almost, but really sour and sweet at the same time. And it's got these little black nuts, or um, seeds inside that uh, you just, you can't eat those. They're real hard, but the fruit is really delicious. This avocado tree actually has kind of a unique story because uh, when we first came here, this property was impenetrable. It was just filled with tons and tons of weedy trees and growth and vines all over it. And we knew that there were some good trees throughout here, but we weren't sure. We couldn't see them at all. It was just like a dense, dense jungle. And so we accidentally chopped this tree down. It was all the way down to the, you know, to the ground, to a stump. And we were really sad because when we looked at it, and the well, way you can tell avocado trees by looking at the back of it, we noticed it had that green-blue tinge that they have, and we knew it was an avocado tree, so we were super sad. And then, thankfully, some local people told us that just let it grow, and it'll grow back. And so that's one thing that's great about uh, life in the tropics, at least here in Puerto Rico, is that if a tree drops or falls, it'll, crumb, it'll come back. So, um, so we just let it keep growing and growing, and now it's, it's basically back to its full size. And not only that is what we found out is that we, we think we chopped it down right at the, the area where it was grafted. So that basically means that we have one side that's the naturalized avocado, and we have one side that is a different type of avocado on the same tree. Um, that was an accident. We didn't do that on purpose. You can do that yourself if you want to double graft a tree um, or triple graft sometimes. Um, but this tree has been so prolific. There's, they're a lot smaller than some of the other ones. But as you can see, they're on the ground right now. They're just falling all over the place. So I have to pick these up every day and there's usually between five to ten just on the ground. And when they drop on the ground, that's when they start ripening. So that's when you can eat them. 
if you pick them a little bit earlier than that, that's okay. Um, they'll still ripen in your house, but if they fall, you know that they're definitely ripe. So just right now, I'm just picking these off the ground. I got just five on the ground. <laughs> So when we chopped down that tree on accident right next to us, we thought, well, we better replace it. So we planted another uh, avocado tree, and this one is called a Wilson, or Wilson Jr. And what distinguishes this type is how long they are. They almost look like a widow, uh, like the musical instrument. So sometimes people call them that. They're kind of long and funny, but they're really good. And something that's kind of unique about that is that you can chop them into little round circles um, for decoration or something like that. We really like these ones too. So here we are now under the flamboyant that we planted. This is a baby from a flamboyant tree that we have over on the other side that we transplanted here and seems to love it because we've got lots and lots of sun. So another avocado that we have is called Candelaria. And this one we had planted actually in the middle of the field before we knew that that was going to be kind of a drive area. So we actually had to transplant it when it was pretty little over here and it seems to be thriving. It's a, another really nice producer over here on this slope. Here's a couple of them. You can see that it has a, a little bit different shape than, for instance, the Wilson or the one over by the truck. A nice, another nice producing avocado. Most of these uh, produce around the same time, but they all kind of overlap a little bit throughout August, September, and then some of them will go into November to December. As we work our way over, I'm coming under this Caimito tree, which is really cool because it has like these golden copper uh, sided sides to the leaves. I also passed by this yuca, which is a, a tuber that you can eat. You boil cassava. It's a nice meal if you are ever super um, have a little bit of time. It takes about an hour to boil. So, but it's like a kind of like potatoes, a starchy food, and it's really easy to grow. You just take a take a clipping of the plant itself, the stalk, and just put it in the ground, and then it'll bring up these leaves that almost look like marijuana plants. So we're always planting more and more. This is another avocado that we just recently planted. You can see how small they are when they first, when you first get them from the nursery. This one is, says it's an avila, so I'm not sure if that's the same as Conde avila or not, but we'll see in the future. This area is um, where we had a giant palm tree, um, a coconut palm, and unfortunately, lightning, we think, struck it and it died. The top of it slowly died and we ended up having to chop it down. So this is all that remains of it. But thankfully, over the course of its life, it gave us lots and lots of babies. So now this is almost like a coconut grove. And we've taken these coconuts and planted them all over around the property, mostly on the borderline. So that's kind of cool. Hopefully the legacy of this beautiful coconut palm will live on. So now we are on this side of the slope where the coconut grove is. And this tree was here when we moved here. It wasn't planted by us. So we don't know what the variety is, what the name is. We call it the butter avocado because it's so thick and creamy and smooth, like without any fiber feeling at all. Um, so we just call it the butter avocado. I think there is actually a butter avocado, but this is what we call it. Um, so as you can see, it looks like it fell down after Maria and we thought we lost it. But then not too long ago, we looked up and we saw that there were still some avocado leaves. Um, so, cause we can kind of identify a plant by the leaves pretty pretty easily. So this tree goes all the way from here up to there and over. And I'm gonna try, this is a pretty steep slope, but I'm gonna try to pick one of these while we're all the way down here. One of our favorite avocados. It's worth the worth the trouble. Here is the, what we call the French peanut, because that's how we learned it. I guess it's also a type of a chestnut. Um, and as a houseplant, they call it the money tree. And this is what it's looking at, like as it forms. When it first grows, it has like a big burst of flowers. And then it starts growing these pods. And after the pods mature, then they come out with those little chestnut things that you can roast or eat raw. Here are the parches growing, the passion fruit, the yellow balls. Here's the passion flower. This is amazing. All over this. This is the sapodilla tree. They got a nisparo here. See if I can 
eine führt. Flowers, I've nice bro. Here's one of the plants. Look at the black bee. It's in the ground. Who can forget the canifas this time of year? This tree is so full that I can't even reach them all. Just these lower ones I pick and eat. Delicious. Look, them are all getting out. They're jumping out, Aiden. Mm -hmm. The coquis are coming out. Well, I'm gonna put them in my hand. <gasps> that is so cool. Common tree frog hatching from its nest. Dad, Daddy, I can't get out of it. Mm -hmm. He's right on that tree. Oh, you see one right there. Look at mm -hmm. that, Aiden. Mm -hmm. So get him. Get him. Catch him. Okay. Oh, he jumped. Yeah. But, there, but there's lots in his hole. Oh, we came here just in time. There'll be one more left, Aiden. Yeah. There he comes. Yeah. One more coming out. Get him. Now for a little break by the sea. This is at Pools Beach here in Rincon, just down the road from our house. Nice to just come here and sit and enjoy the waves, palm trees. On this old finca. Today we're in the parking lot of uh, AutoZone. So the truck we've been using because the Mustang's uh, transmission is having some problems. It's stuck in first gear. So we're using the truck and now there's a slight little pinhole in the back of the uh, cylinder head in the freeze plug. So I'm gonna get some stop leak and uh, we're gonna refill this sucker. As you can see it's pretty rusted. It's been a long time since we've uh, changed the radiator fluid so today's the perfect day.
All right, today we are spending the afternoon at the marina in Rincon. It's one of our favorite beaches here. But it looks like it's gonna rain pretty soon. We're seeing a lot of lightning strikes and some thunder. But there's never a bad day at the beach. What are we doing, Aiden? Yeah, I'm making a new home for them. My new baby chicks are moving out. How come Dad is making the cage? Because somebody's got to do it. We're going to make a little wire cage inside of the chicken coop. Now they have wings. They're working better, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, show me the fruit, Aiden. Por aquí, ¿y qué es esto? Haboticaba. Haboticaba, that's right. This is the haboticaba fruit. Aiden, do you, Aiden ¿te gusta la haboticaba? Sí. Sí? Oh, look how it goes right on the bark. ¿Te vas a comer una? Sí. Okay. Wow, muy bien. These are called Prida Barbados, or here in Puerto Rico they call them a flamboyan enano, even though they're not really flamboyans at all, but they look a little bit like it. They're in various colors. They're really a nice, easy to grow plant. The only negative thing really is that they grow with thorns. So you just have to be a little bit careful with the thorns on them. Oh, hey, looks like we got some uh, bananas ripening too. They're starting to turn yellow. I like these ones. These are the, I think these are namwas. Yeah, they're starting to turn yellow and the birds are getting them. That's how I know they're ready to eat. And what's Eden doing? What are you doing over here? I'm going up to the pool. Good job. Always wash your bananas. You never know what's been sitting on them. Got it nice and clean, Aiden? Yeah. You want to try it? Let's eat this one. Straight from the tree, Aiden. Have a bite. Well, let me try it first. Mmm. Aiden, who eats who eats bananas a lot? What animal? I know. <gasps> I bet you it's the monkeys. Is it the monkey? Let me see. How do you make a monkey sound? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. So we have so many avocados. I am going to try a new experiment that I've never done and make some. Tu quieres más turkey? 
we are going to make some avocado chocolate pudding. Let's see how it goes. Once you have all your ingredients in there, the chocolate, cacao, avocado, honey, almond milk, vanilla, and some slightly melted chocolate chips. And it's time to be blended. Let's see how this turns out. Here's the final result of the chocolate pudding made with aguacates. When you have lots of leftover avocados, gotta get creative. Okay, here's our taste tester. What do you see in there, Eden? I see baby chocolate besos. Baby chocolate besos, and let's see. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Te gusta? Mm -hmm. And you don't usually like aguacates, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you like aguacates? Mm -hmm. No, but you like this? Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm roasting the seeds of the French peanut or money tree. They're like chestnuts. So just roasting them on the pan. These are what they look like after they're roasted. Kind of like a little bit like a filbert or a hazelnut in taste. Okay, Aiden, what are you doing? Open the presents. Look at these presents, Aiden. This is from one of your the people on our videos. What do you say? Gracias. Gracias. Muy bien.